Hey guys, Lucas here. Welcome to K News for week 3 2018 and as always a big shout out to you my K News boosters on Patreon. Thanks for your trust. Since I have to catch up with my schedule, I decided to make one or two lightning fast episodes so I can actually release them ahead of time again. But not that fast. After a week with 5, last week had only 4 launches with the first one being Epsilon for Japan on Wednesday. The rocket launched from Uchinoura and went south aiming for a sun synchronous polar beer. I mean orbit. Up top is s narrow 2 or advanced satellite with new system architecture for observation. It has a big radar up top with a foldable dish antenna. Radar stands for radio detection and ranging and is one of the oldest and simplest methods to measure a distance wirelessly. Except maybe guesstimation. It is simple because you don't actually need a complex circuit. You can build a simple radar with things you have lying around at home but you won't be able to tell the distance, just the fact that there is something in the way reflecting your signal. s 2 uses it to scan the ground with a resolution of 1 meter. You can think of it like a camera that uses a big flashlight to lighten up earth to then take a picture of it. This allows them to map the planet independent from day or night. This would be very difficult using regular light because, well, a flashlight bright enough to light up the earth from space would consume way too much energy. The energy of electromagnetic radiation can be calculated using a simple formula. E equals HF, where H is the Planck constant and F the frequency. Visible light is in the terahertz range while radio waves are generated with a couple hundred kilohertz. So it takes in the order of 1 million to 1 billion times less energy to make a radio wave swing and you can therefore easily light up earth to make a picture. One important side effect is we cannot see it so nobody is therefore disturbed by it. Next to launch was a Long March 11 for China. It took off on Friday from Zhou Chuen towards north also into a sun synchronous polar orbit following the terminator in the evening. This is the line which separates the day from the night and not Arnold Schwarzenegger. On board were 6 satellites, the two main ones being from type GVIN-1 for Earth observation aka telescopes and the other 4 ones are CubeSats. The first pair are technology demonstrators which test a variety of systems in space like stabilization and the other two ones are communication satellites from which one is Kepler-2 for the Canadian startup Kepler Communications based in Toronto. Their plan for the future is to create a space internet you can access from anywhere around the world similar to Iridium or what SpaceX and others are planning. That's of course quite a task for a small startup but this first launch proves they are heading in the right direction. Long March 11 is one of China's smallest launchers able to bring 350 kilograms of payload into such a sun synchronous orbit. This was only its third flight since 2015 so there is not yet a very high demand for these. I'm not sure how that will look like in the future but at least many small rocket companies expect the small satellite market to grow. The future will tell I guess. Next up is Atlas V which launched on Friday night from Cape Canaveral and that is me trying to sound American. Its destination was a geosynchronous transfer orbit or GTO for short. Up top the rocket was another satellite for the space based infrared system. A satellite that monitors infrared light sources on earth. Now you might ask why is that? Well, the reason is to simply track big missiles like rockets. The hot exhaust shines so brightly in the infrared spectrum of light it can be seen from space despite all the other heat coming off the surface. Even a raging bushfire does not quite reach its brightness so attempts to cover up such missile launches are probably in vain. At least as long as nobody develops a cooler way to launch stuff to space. Atlas V launched in its weird asymmetric configuration using a single strap on booster on its side. Its main core engine, the RD-180, has enough control authority to make sure the rocket keeps heading in the right direction because everyone who plays KSP knows a single booster really wants to make a rocket flip. And the last launch that happened last week was of course Rocket Lab's Electron. After many delays since 2017, they were finally able to launch off of New Zealand towards a polar orbit. Next to the three small sets I already covered in a previous episode, Rocket Lab decided to add a fourth undisclosed payload. A disco ball named Humanity Star. Yeah, the idea is, well, to make people look in the sky and get inspired by the glittering satellite passing by. I personally have mixed feelings about this though. While it's certainly a nice thought, I bet there are a lot of astronomers who are not pleased by that. 
pointing your telescope at the night sky, there is now one more object they have to avoid that would ruin their long exposure shots. A long exposure is necessary to catch very dim objects. A flying by a disco ball would make it look like this. Now, luckily humanity's star will not orbit forever and its altitude will decay over the course of roughly 9 months. They have also set up a website for everybody to track it in case you want to see it that I will link in the description. Now, what's your opinion on humanity's star? I would especially like to know what astronomers think about it. I'm not sure how intrusive such things really are considering it can only be seen right after sunset when the sky is dark and the sun is still hitting the disco ball from the side. So maybe it's in the end not that big of a deal at all. I guess the cheaper launches get, the more often we will actually see joke or marketing payloads. Imagine a satellite projecting text and images with a laser onto clouds from orbit. Okay, that shall conclude this quicker than usual episode and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.